We will begin today's video with the deposition of Sam Fields. Would he back up the deposition given by Mose Feltner, or would he deny what happened? Why would the defendants decide that now would be the time to split apart to face the court system? How would the contempt of court charge end for Felix Feltner, who helped Moses Feltner escape to Ohio? What, if any verdict would be rendered for Moses by the end of the contempt cases? Come along with us as we try to answer these questions and more. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube algorithm that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Sam Fields makes his deposition. While Sam's deposition would not be as explosive as Moses Feltner's, it does corroborate his testimony as to the events that happened around the Marcus Hargis trial. According to the Citizen, article dated February 16, 1905, quote, Deposition of Sam Fields. He is one of the witnesses who it is alleged were enticed away. Winchester, Kentucky, February 10th. The deposition of Sam Fields was taken. He was one of the witnesses who it is alleged were enticed away from here during the Markham Hargis trial and is now under arrest for contempt of court. He corroborated Moses Feltner in that B.F. French paid them money and that all expenses were paid by Feltner. Sheriff McCord received the Circuit Court of Breathitt County a warrant of arrest for Mose Feltner. It was issued at the request of S.H. Hurst, who was his bondsman for $5,000 for his appearance at Jackson to be tried for the killing of Jesse Fields, and Hurst desired to be released from this bond. Circuit Judge Benton has stated that so long as the prisoners are in custody of Clark County officers, they shall not be taken to Jackson. Feltner will, therefore, not attempt to give bond. It is rumored that troops will be asked for when Feltner is taken to Jackson for trial in a few weeks. Unquote. A couple of things here. A $5,000 bond was no small amount of money in 1905. That amount of money would be worth, as of February 2024, $174,287.50. We have no idea how much Feltner nor Fields was worth, if they were rich men or poor men. But even if they were rich, this is still a huge chunk of change to hand over for a bond. Whether or not S.H. Hurst was released from this bond or not, Feltner was still under bond when he got out of jail. According to the Mount Sterling Advocate article dated April 26, 1905, quote, Moses Feltner and Sam Fields are out of jail. Feltner gave a bond for $5,000. Fields was released on his own recognizance, unquote. Criminal trials. There would be a split in the cases for contempt of court. However, at this point in the events, the Hargises, Callahan, French, and Mose and Felix Feltner would be charged together. There would be a motion for a continuance, which would be denied by the court. According to the Breathitt County News article, dated April 7, 1905, quote, Continuance denied. The contempt cases at Winchester against the Hargises, Callahan, B.F. French, Mose Feltner and Felix Feltner had been passed until the, after the trials at Lexington, in which some of the parties are involved. French and Felix Feltner filed affidavits for continuance, claiming sickness, unquote. Felix Feltner would be the first of the men to split off from the cases. He would end up being found guilty and faced a fine and jail time for his participation in the crime. According to the Mount Sterling Advocate, Article dated June 7, 1905. Quote, Jail sentence of two years and a fine of $3,000. Against Felix Feltner, other trials set for September. On Thursday in Clark Circuit Court, the above verdict was returned against Felix Feltner 
for contempt of court and having aided and abetted in spiriting away witnesses summoned to appear in the $100,000 damage suit of Mrs. J.B. Markham at Winchester against James and Alex Hargis, B.F. French, and Ed Callahan for complicity in murder of her husband in May 1903. This was the heaviest fine for contempt ever imposed in Kentucky. As Judge Benton had an open court in Nicholas this week, the cases against French, the Hargises, Mose Feltner, Sam Fields, and Ed Callahan were set for trial at a special term beginning September 1st. Sheriff McCord placed a special guard in charge of Moses Feltner, saying as much liberty was due him as the Hargises enjoyed. Feltner thinks that the conviction of Felix is a vindication of his, Moses' statements, in his famous affidavit about the assassinators and Breathitt, unquote. Now this seems a little odd to us. How could the conviction of Felix, Moe's cousin or brother, be a vindication to his statements? Please remember that we could not find where Felix fit into the family exactly, even though some reports him as Moses' brothers and others as his cousin. Did Moses feel vindicated because of what he was saying was truthful about the whole situation? That the reason why Moses left the state of Kentucky was by both bribe and threat and that he felt that he had no choice in the matter. And by using Felix as a way for the men to be able to reach and intimidate Moses? The sentence for Felix was not just to sit in a jail cell for two years. According to the Hartford Republican article dated September 8, 1905, quote, The trial of Felix Feltner last spring resulted in a fine of $3,000 and imprisonment in the jail at hard labor for two years, unquote. Again, we see a lot of money in this statement. Not only was Feltner to spend the next two years under the sentence of hard labor for his actions, but he was to pay a hefty fine as well. $3,000 in 1905 would amount to $104,572.50 in 2024 currency. Again, we don't know how rich Felix was, but that was a huge amount of money to pay for a fine back then. It seems that Judge Benton was not messing around when it came to contempt of court in his courtroom. For now, this was all of the information that we could find out about the contempt case that Mose Feltner had to face. We could not find where he went to court to actually face these charges and if he was found guilty or innocent. He will testify in the upcoming cases and he will drop some sensational charges against the men he will testify against. He will also have to face charges concerning the assassination attempt against Judge Hargis at a later date. So, even though we will be leaving Mose Feltner for now, he will be back again with our other cases in the timeline of events. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Feuds. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification button. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries in Appalachian history.